jump right in. How's everyone doing today? Good. All right. Who's had some good news in the last 24 hours? Went under contract on one of my on a listing. Fantastic. Hey. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. It's a good friend of mine and I was kind of about tired having those conversations about, are we doing something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I think the real estate market is awesome, except for townhomes in Sandy Springs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's amazing, was, unless you got a townhome in Sandy Springs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know uh, Carrie had trouble with one in there too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Speaking of which, um, I was talking to uh, Heather Hare about this two days ago, and uh, she did an open house for me at my Sandy Springs townhome probably close to a year ago, uh, or a little less, or yeah, a little less than a year ago, and met the next door neighbor, and she's about to list his home uh, during the open house. So it's going to be a half a million dollar house. Nice. Yeah. Awesome, guys. All right, who else wants to share? What are we grateful for today? Come on now. It's supposed to be about role play. So I'm kind of in a, I'm, I'm grateful I'm taking a client um, that I'd had a little issue with and I seem to have salvaged it. So we're going to go look at a town home today okay and this will be interesting but is that, the, we'll um, you, is that the one we were talking about the other day um yeah do you, do you mind yeah. if i share a detail about that not at all okay so i think this will be beneficial to, to everyone okay yes um, help, help me uh make sure i i uh correctly kind of set the stage okay greta so basically greta's working with a uh, a buyer who um uh, Greta made a recommendation for a lender. The guy was pre-qualified at a certain number. And I think he went and got pre-qualified with a different lender and he was pre-qualified for like 30 or $40,000 more. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Significantly. It, rather than saying, oh my gosh, Greta, I could buy a $40,000 more if I just work with this guy potentially. He took the opposite approach, which was I'm kind of frustrated at you because you're steering me towards your lender um, and believed that um, he wasn't getting uh, kind of the best match and the best opportunity from Greta's recommendation. So there's a lot of things at play here, okay? A lot of things at play. The first thing I would say is you need to make sure that you're, we're comparing apples to apples. Okay, so if, for example, let's say the first person was Kathy and Kathy, you know, took his pay stubs and took his tax returns and did his um, credit score review and, you know, really was thorough in the data collection, the information collection. And then this other guy, maybe he just said, oh, I make 90 grand a year and my credit score is good. And he spent five minutes, you know, putting it in some, um, sp some spreadsheet and said, oh, you're good for 440. And maybe Kathy said you were good for 400 or something. So first of all, they need to make sure that the person is being scrutinized equally from, from both people, okay? Um, I've never had to explain this to somebody, but we, it's actually illegal for us to get kickbacks, right, from a lender. So you send a, a prospect to a lender, they can't like, there's nothing in it for you other than the fact that hopefully it'll be a smooth transaction, right? So they're not allowed to like give us kickbacks or rebates or something like that. So if the time comes where you have to, you feel like it's necessary to bring up to your client, say, look, it's totally up to you who you use. However, with my experience, there's a few things I would steer away from. One is um, non-local lenders, right? They're going to generally use um, uh, appraisers that don't understand the value of your specific area, right? And um, they don't know the, the way that real estate transactions work here. So also, um, if the contact number for your lender has a seven digit extension number, that's a problem, most likely, okay? Or if they're in Seattle, 
uh, that's going to be most likely a problem. Is it possible? Yes. Are you going to get this, the service that you and your client deserve? Not likely. Okay. Internet lenders, very, very tricky. Okay. Very, very tricky. Um, ultimately, it's a, it's a pre-qualification. It's not an exact science. Okay. So this person, I'm glad, I'm not sure how you handle that situation, Greta, other than to say, look, if you want to use that lender, fine. But I want to make sure that um, they have put you through the same scrutiny that this other person did. Does that make sense? Y'all follow that? Yes. Okay. I, I actually told, I explained that to him and I also tried to point out to him that, you know, it only benefits both of us if you're, if you're, if you qualify for more money, right? Yeah. You're going to get a better home. I'm going to, you know, reap the benefits of that as well. And then I did have to point out to, I'm like, I'm happy for you. And I did point out that pre-qualification and pre-approval are two different things. And I said, I would be happy to explain the difference if you wanted to know. And then I, I kind of said, I left the door wide open and said, um, you know, I'm happy if you, I, if you want to work with someone else, I totally get it, but I am here to answer your questions, even if you go with another realtor. So not realtor, and, but uh, lender. Well, even if, even if you went with another realtor, oh, I mean, if, if you decided to realtor, leave, we're not talking for a little while. Yeah. If, 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 um, if he wanted to, you know, do something else, I was happy to let him go and I let him know I would still be here as a resource. And he decided to stay with me, even though he was pretty ticked. Very okay, much. Let, let me just take, make a note on that. If he decides to go with another realtor ultimately, and he has mm -hmm. a buyer brokerage agreement signed with that other agent, you mm -hmm. really should not be, you, you could give him like the name of a painter or something. Like you could do a ministerial task for him, but do not give him anything that resembles advice. Okay. okay. Can do. Yeah. If he calls and he's like, Oh, Hey Greta, my other realtor is out of town. Can you answer some questions? Uh, mm -hmm. No, <laughs> okay. we're not doing that. Okay. That's not the way this works. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Beautiful. Anyone else want to share anything? All right. I want to go over just a, a tiny bit of um, calendar stuff. Today from 12 o'clock to one o'clock in this room is going to be the success series with Marie Burgess. Um, we've talked about Marie. She's been at the office for a little over 10 years. She's been in the business for a, a little over 40 years. Um, she has seen it all. She, she uh, was in the business when you had to go down to the office and pick up the key and they didn't have GPSs and they didn't have cell phones and they didn't have, you know, Twilio and command and all that stuff. So um, I think she's going to be a wealth of knowledge. As many of us know, um, she's had a very, a very challenging year. Her, uh, uh, she's had a couple of operations, hip replacements and stuff. Um, and then her husband ultimately was, uh, uh, had, a, had a bout with cancer and ultimately passed away at the end of the year. Um, and her name, his name is Tim. He was basically her, her uh, business partner. So um, this is kind of like her like kind of comeback, if you will. So I'm going to ask that you um, show, her your, show her your support today. Um, she, there is nothing that makes that woman happier than uh, helping others succeed. Um, she is one of the biggest givers in the entire market center. So, so please do your best to attend that session at 12 o'clock. So 12 to one o'clock, um, from one to two o'clock, we'll do the launch mastermind today. Um, so please don't hesitate to come in. Um, if you need to, uh, hop out at one 30 to do 36, 12, three, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to share with you guys is this is the last, uh, weekend of the month. Okay. So I want, this is a great time, uh, but maybe even on Sunday to do some reflection on your, your trans or your, your activity during the month. Okay. I would say there's a, a handful of us that are at or beyond our goal, uh, already, right. For, for appointments and listings taken and contacts and all that. Um, and it's safe to say that there are a number of people that are, are a bit behind their goal. So what I want you to ask yourself this weekend is let's, let's take our, let's take the pulse. Okay. Let's do an honest assessment of, uh, evaluating our, our activity and our results. Okay. The way we used our time and our results. Okay. 
If you are currently behind on your goals, then I want you to ask yourself, what am I capable of, right? Where am I using my strengths? Where am I falling short? What skills do I need to develop in February? What, what do I need to practice in February? Do I need to understand the contracts better? Do I need to understand DocuSign better? Do I need to understand presentations better? Do I need to you know, get sharper on social media? Right, let's take an honest assessment. Let's go to the doctor this weekend and let's look at your stats, okay? You know, when they go to the doctor, they take your pulse, they see how much you weigh, they maybe take your, uh, um, they listen to your breathe and stuff. That's like the basic stuff. If they find anything there that's troubling, then they, they uh, we gotta go run some more tests, okay? I'm looking to see how many appointments you've gone on this month. And if that is below the number, that you know is your goal, we need to go, we need to do some further testing. Okay. Oh, how are the scripts? How's the presentation? How are we using our time? What's our mindset like? Right? Are we coming into the office enough? Do we have a role play partner? Right? If I followed you around all day, would I know you were a real estate agent? If I looked at your calendar, would I know you're a real estate agent? See what I'm saying? Okay. For those that are gonna evaluate their business and see that they're right on track, man, that's the biggest high five ever. For those that are not on track, I believe in you, okay? I'm coaching you for free for crying out loud, right? Until it works. So I believe in you or you wouldn't be in this room, okay? Um, we just need to make small changes to our daily activity so we can get back on track, okay? Remember we said that the person who adds the most people to their uh, pipeline uh, this week, so the fourth week in January, I got a little special prize for you. And I think I might start doing a little bit more of that because you guys seem to be a, a, maybe a tiny bit more motivated when there's a competition. So um, I think we'll probably do a little bit more of that. Does, does everyone like that idea? Okay. Okay. Um, just to, from a, from a, um, data or from a, a reporting standpoint, you guys are a hundred, without even reporting for the fourth month, fourth week, you guys are at 121% of the goal for total appointments. We're 80, almost 84% of the listings taken goal. Okay, you guys, are, you guys are doing great. Just keep up the good work. What I am noticing though, is that when I'm running your MREA2 models and we're talking privately about your conversion rates, okay, I'm giving, I'm suggesting that you're going to have a 75% conversion rate between appointment and taking the listing, 75%. Okay. What we're seeing in the numbers, however, is seller taken is nine out of 20. That's less than half. And buyer is, buyer taken is 25 out of 59. That's also less than half. So that is something that I intend to work on um, a good bit with you guys is trying to figure out wh what's going on there. Is it that we're not pre-qualifying the appointments enough? Is it that we're not closing for the paperwork? Is it that we're trying to do that yet they're giving objections that we can't handle and they're choosing someone else, right? So if, if that percentage sticks, right? Number one, I think that's a little low again. However, you might have to re-go re back and redo your, your, your um, projections to include a lower conversion rate, which means you're gonna to have to work a little harder to get your financial goals. Make sense? Any thoughts on what I just said? Okay. You love a competition. All right, Greta, you're in charge of the competition for the first week in February. Think hard about what you think it should be, okay? All yeah. right, let's talk about some role play. Who wants to do some role play today? Did anyone use the three ask script yesterday? Did anyone print it out, put it next to their workstation, read it a thousand times? Anybody memorize it yet? I tried to use it yesterday. I went into a neighborhood that um, I had shown a house um, to a client and I was door knocking around the edge of the lake and 
it surprises me what people will do. Like I was talking to a man and he looked so scary, like an old curmudgeon man. And I just kind of asked him and he went inside and got the directory and came <laughs> out and told me the names of like the next three people down the street. So, um, wow. it was interesting. yeah. So there's two things that popped in my mind about that. Number one, man, that's, I, I love hearing that you're, you're taking that activity, that, that action. That's awesome. Greta. Um, First of all, especially in light of COVID, is people are like dying to have, that's not the right word. People are really um, interested in having adult conversations right now. People are, are being, uh, they're, they're, they're becoming reclusive a little bit. They're, you know, getting, you know, uh, hanging out with young kids and, you know, quarantine is pretty exhausting, right? They're not socializing as much as they're used to. They're, they're so interested in an adult friendly conversation. That's something we can take advantage of. Okay. Um, that guy, he's probably like the neighborhood, like, you know, you know, uh, what am I looking, what's the word I'm looking for? Like socialite, right? He knows who's getting married. He, he knows who's getting divorced. He knows who's pregnant. He knows who's having, who's, you know, wants to move, right? That's probably a great guy to put in your database and to send a little card to and to check in with. See what I'm saying? He's, he doesn't know a thing about you, Greta. Yeah. He's already interested. You gave him a good enough impression where he's willing to attach his name to, to, the, to you. See what I'm saying? Yes. Imagine if you had, imagine if that guy sent you three pieces of business a year and you went and found another 10 of those people and they each sent you three pieces of business a year. You never have to call a stranger again. That'd be nice. That's the power of this business. I, I was uh, with, in a class with Mo Anderson many years ago. Mo's the first CEO or second CEO of, of KW. And uh, she said, what if you, instead of having a database of, 3,000 people who barely know you. What if you had a database of 25 people and you knew like everything about them? You knew what their cat's name was. You knew where they vacationed. You knew what kind of vegetables they liked. I mean, you knew everything. And they sent you one or two pieces of business each per year. You never have to call a stranger. Make sense? So don't, don't forget it's about, it's not always about quantity, it's about quality. Right, you get those cheerleaders for your business and they will change your world. They will change your world. Okay, what's the topic today for, uh, for role play? First one gets to choose. Man, what is going on today? Everyone tired? Come on, Ebony, give me something. Oh my gosh, is this thing working? No, I'm here. I had to take my gloves off. I'm walking. <laughs> All right, you don't have to role play. Give me a topic though. Okay, I've been working, I've been working for sale by other scripts. Like that's just my thing. Okay. Um, so actually Diane and I had a really long conversation about this yesterday. So one thing I just wanna uh, chat with you guys about with respect to for sale by owners is just know what your know what you're after, right? If you're after the listing, don't go in there and preview the home for a buyer and then try to like finagle a listing appointment out of it. That's just not, I just don't like that approach. It's not, it's not full of integrity and it's confusing to the for sale by owner. And quite frankly, it's confusing to you. You don't even know if you're doing a listing presentation or a buyer presentation or what you're supposed to do. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're experiencing, Ebony. Are you what, what has been your approach? What, has, um, what challenge are you, are you facing? What are you learning? Well, I'm still, sometimes they'll let me get through the script. You know, sometimes not, but either way, I'm like, look, practice is good. Um, and the approach that I'm using is going in from a perspective of how can I help and um, actually finding a buyer, but it makes sense what you say. Like, if you don't have a buyer, you, you, you don't know which side of the table you're on so that 
made sense what you say, but I pretty much start out like, how can I help you? Like, <laughs> I, I what areas that's can a, I help you? That is a, that's a great line. I mean, certainly. Um, remember that you could be asking them, obviously, what their motivation is, where they're moving to, if they, if they need help with that move, right? Well, generally, I don't get that far. Why? Like, I, it's either I'm not interested, no, thank you. You know, they're nice about it. You know, oh, sometimes you, I don't even get to get... What are you not interested in? I haven't even said anything yet. What are you not interested in? But I think that's where uh, my confidence building is. I'm still working on because sometimes it's just like instead of going for you know keep pushing keep pushing it's just like okay thank you at some of these calls I just kind of like show this crunch and it's just like move on to the next you know which I stop I need to stop doing but it's just like okay I can you made the call so you're making progression but just eventually I'm going to get all the way there the only ones who I get to the script with are the ones who let me get to the script so a lot of times you have to close, like they teach us in bold that you're supposed to attempt five closings, right? More than likely the first time you ask for an appointment, they're not going to give it to you. So you may have to shift to discussing, you know, another type of motivation or something else they, they might be struggling with, identify another hiccup, identify the fact that you can help them with that, close again, right? If they're like, oh, I'm not interested. So in, interesting, you don't even know what I was offering. How, what are you not interested in? Well, I'm not interested in talking to a realtor. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, uh, I had, I was calling to ask you if I could show you how to net more money for your home and save you thousands of dollars. Would you consider meeting with me for 15 minutes? No obligation. I, I don't think everyone will say yes to that, but I think you'll get some yeses. To that. Oh, then you yes. got a straight up listing appointment. You're going in there clear as day. I'm here to help you list this home. See what I'm saying? I do. I'm going to keep working it. Like, but I just think that um, I need to study my knock a little bit more, like my home swap, my knock, like just kind of going there prepared. I think the proper, it's not them. I think the full preparation is on me. And the more that I know and the more confident in, I get in knowing like, hey, you got this, you have two other things that you can offer and really good, you know, then I will be able to close it. But I think that I need to work on closing and stop just letting them shut the conversation down and moving on. I think I may be just giving up a little okay, bit great. too soon. I'm going to give you a hand, up, Ebony, if you're cool with this. Ebony would like a script practice partner for Fizbos. Who's interested? I'm Ebony's Wait, script I have practice it. partner. <laughs> Excuse one. me. I'm like, no, no, no. And she's, I love Donna. <laughs> like, yeah. We so are, we, okay. Not in it, not we replacing Donna. Every day. We, let's, let's do, you let's can't do replace Donna. Bit. Let's do a little bit more. So, Bill. So, meet, meet for a little bit longer or grab a, Donna, I'm, I'm not. No, you're fine. I was, you know, I was going to jump in and say, because you said that, you know, we shouldn't um, start off with saying that you know we might have a buyer if we don't really have a buyer but we also have in our script that we cover other um win-win opportunities yeah not only we might have a buyer but there may be people that come to see their home that don't make an offer that they could share those folks with us because maybe we could help them to find a home or we might be able to help them sell their home if they're not able to sell it themselves and then we also are trying to work in knock in so that they know there's an option available that if they do sell their home right away, being a seller's market and it's gonna go really fast, that they don't have to have that stress of um, worrying about where they're gonna go, that they can actually find their new home first, then fix up their house and put it on the market and just not have that stress of being worried about where to go. So that's what we're working on. That's, so that's, that's the script we've been working on every day. I like that. That's kind of like a, that it's kind of like you're, you're making clear that you can help them in a number of ways. And it's basically rather than saying, do you want help? The question is, which of these ways would you like me to help you with? Yeah, we're just trying to get the appointment. We're just trying to get our foot in the door and then be able to share the different tools that we have. Okay, great. So using those scripts, this, this is for Donna and Ebony, what, 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 uh, what opposition are you facing? What, what, 
what reluctance are you hearing? I haven't made any calls. And I don't think, I just think that because we do good in script practice, I just think that to be honest, it's more of a, a confidence issue. Like, it's just like, I'm knocking, I feel like for me, it's easier for me to knock down one hurdle at a time okay. and making the phone call, that's the start. And I think like when Don and I are on the phone, oh, it's great. We know those scripts backwards and forwards. Like, it's great. But when I get on the phone, it's just like a disconnect and the heart starts beeping. It's just like, oh my gosh, okay, they picked up the phone, and then the phone. <laughs> say this right. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much anxiety, you know, within that, that I'm just still trying to wrap my head around the fact that, hey, I'm on the phone with them. <laughs> Now I have to finish it up. So I think it's more of, it, it's not even scripts, it, it's me. <laughs> I'll own that, but what, it's just what like you, other what areas. Would be, what would be a great first step? What, what, what can we work on first to help you with that, that stress? I don't know. Can um, I? Yeah, Greta, go I was ahead. gonna say, can, can I intervene? But, go ahead, Greta. <laughs> something that has helped me kind of get because I think you know I had a lot of anxiety over just like cold calling and is identifying um if you're comfortable talking on the phone but I think you have to be comfortable knowing that this could go absolutely nowhere and once you kind of wrap your head around the fact that I'm talking to someone and it's not a stress oh my god I have to have a close oh my god I have to make a sale and it's more I'm just calling to help and you wrapped yourself around completely abandoning your own self-interests it becomes a lot easier to be sincere in your desire to help does that make sense that. at all thank you yeah. for that Greta because I, I do know, have a fear I can't, I can't get <clears throat> very past well it very well said and, and you know if they say no I'm not interested in your help like Greta suggested it's they don't even know who you are right that they're not telling you you're a bad person or you're a jerk or you shouldn't be calling. They're just basically saying they don't want your help right now, right? If you call them in a week, things could be different, right? Uh, Ty, what were you, what did you want to add? Okay. I, I was just going to say, honestly, practice makes professional. Practice does not make perfect. But when I was going through all of that, I just started, you know, it's easy to say, just pick up the phone and do it. <laughs> but that is kind of it. And just like when you started a very new job, you didn't know where the bathroom was, you didn't know where the, how to use a fax machine. And then six months later, it's just, um, you're almost on autopilot. So I just started, and with my calls, I just started at the lowest, like a $1,800 piece of land. If I don't get that, I'm very, very okay with that. <laughs> so it was like practice. So I just $1,800, $1,850. And then I kept going. And by the time I kind of got up to prices that I, I really wanted to work with, I had shaken off the um, anxiety. Yeah. I had kind of, you know, um, smoothed out some of the edges. And we all, every day, you're going to have to learn and practice and all this other good stuff. But by the time I, I had worked my way up to prices I wanted to work with, um, I was much more comfortable. So I would just say, start where you kind of, like uh, Greta said, where you really don't have any interest, not interest in the person or the individual, but you just kind of aren't necessarily look, if that doesn't go wrong, if that doesn't go, you're fine with that. But it's for the practice. And then I also had a question. Um, two things I'm running into with the FISBOs is one, COVID, do you know what I'm saying? They're just like, but you, I can't do anything unless I see the house and I can't Zoom a viewing. And then, mm -hmm. you could really okay. I mean, you could say, "Hey, you know, if you it, first of all, let's just assume you don't have reluctance going into the home for COVID reasons, right?" You know, I know. But if, <laughs> what they're su suggesting is that they do, right? right. What they're right. saying, great. You right. know, maybe we could do like a, a Zoom together where you just walk me through the home, and you're you're basically mm -hmm. saying, "Okay, this is the kitchen." This is the kitchen. You're like, oh, um, can you bring the camera a little closer to the stove? Let me make sure I see the stove real good. Okay. And then this is the breakfast space. Oh, show me the, the um, you know, the corner a little bit one more time so I can see where the door is leading out to the porch. Right. And they're like, okay, here's the coffered ceiling. So can, let me look at that one more time so I can see what that really looks like. Take good notes on that. I mean, you could walk through the home. Okay. I mean, nothing's stopping you from doing that. 
Yeah. And then they have an apprehension, but don't just say, oh, you don't like, you don't want me to come in your home because it's COVID, I, I'll move on. I mean, say, I, I completely understand your, you know, your feelings on that. In order to give you the best advice, I'd like to see your home though. Could we do a walkthrough, a virtual walkthrough? That's like a virtual open house, right? I mean, remember there's yeah. three types yes. of people in this world right now. There's mm -hmm. people that um, are absolutely scared to death to, to do anything, right? Like, mm -hmm. like the person that Ty's potentially talking about. There are the people that are taking appropriate precautions yet still going out into the world. And there's people that think it's all a hoax, right? And we are in our, court, in our daily activities of speaking to people, we're probably speaking to people in all three of those categories. So we do need to kind of put a feeler out there to determine, hey, is this person somebody that might infringe on my boundaries? Like coming in here, not talking, you know, not wearing a mask and not being respectful of social distancing and all that. Or is this person that somebody that's going to freak out if I come near them? Mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm not saying any of that's right or wrong. I'm just saying we have to be sensitive to that. See what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. You want to be respectful. I mean, to people's space and boundaries and things like that. So, okay, we've taken the, just really quick, we've taken the tour. Uh, everything looks great. And then just move forward with the presentation because this is going to take a mind adjustment because yeah, you're not I mean, used to go and show. It depends on... Um, you know, what the person's greatest need is, right? What, what are they interested in meeting you about? Is it, right. you know, it, okay. if, if that is their way of essentially inviting you into the home for a listing presentation, then you'd say, great, um, you know, let's sit down at the table, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. let's, have our, let's have our conversation right here over the computer. Just touch it okay. Fine. okay, all right, please. Um, but one, one thing that I would recommend since we're kind of talking a little bit about FISBOs, um, is <clears throat> you want it to be abundantly clear where what's like Ebony suggested, what side of the table are you on here? Um, now, when you bring a buyer to a FISBO, you're, you're doing something that you might not understand that you're doing, which is you are validating to the owner that they don't need to hire a realtor to find the buyers. They'll just market the FISBOs and the realtors will bring the buyers. Do you see what I'm saying? So in some respects, you're actually going against yourself because you're showing the owner that all they got to do is put it on Zillow and you'll start calling them and bring your buyers and you'll be happy to receive the commission when, you, when, they, when they buy it, right? So yes, that is a strategy. Hey, I'm not calling you because I want to list your home. I'm calling you because I work with buyers all the time. Where are you going to be moving to? I figured if you didn't have a relationship with a realtor, you, you likely don't because you would have used that realtor um, to, to market your home. So I wanted to introduce myself to you as a buyer's agent. And then all of your communication is about where do you want to move, right? Or So you should never flip flop. When you move to Seattle or whatever. What, so, what Bill, like, let's just say that um, potentially you do, like your intentions are going in there to look for a buyer but what happens if that changes like let's just say that you had like four buyers you bought them by none of them like the house but then that seller kind of got comfortable with you to where he wanted to he wanted you to list the house like is there any yeah, is there I mean, any so you can flip flop in that setting i guess well, that's could, what i'm trying to ask you could i don't know if i'd use the word flip flop but yeah of course if they if you're building rapport with them Hey, how you doing? Do you need anything this week? Do you have any questions I could answer? Do you need, um, you know, how's the experience going for you? I mean, you're just making small, small talk and they say, you know what? I'm tired of this. Do you work with sellers also? I'm like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Right. But if you keep going back and forth between this buyer and seller thing, it's really confusing, particularly to the, to the owner. And it makes you disingenuous to some degree. Right. Um, the fact is, is we know that if they sell their home themselves, they are increasing the likelihood of being sued. They're increasing the likelihood of the deal not going through properly. They're increasing the likelihood of hiccups occurring. And the only people that can help them with the hiccups aren't in the, aren't involved in the transaction. Right. So we know they're taking on more chances. They need help. Right. 
Remember, if you go in there with the mindset of a, of a seller and they're like, oh, we just listed, we're going to give it a month. Okay, great. I'd completely understand that. I respect that desire. Um, would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you? And they'll be like, okay. Now remember, Gene Rivers says that the people that get the listings are the people that are the most, um, deliver the most value and are the most uh, persistent. So you call them every Monday and you say, hey, Michael, um, it's Bill with Keller Williams. Um, I, you know, I just wanted to check in on the property. Is, uh, is Main Street still available? Yeah, Main Street's still available. Oh, okay, okay. So did you get any offers this week? Or how many offers did you get this week? How many? I didn't get any. Oh, okay. Um, how many showings did you have? Uh, one. Uh, was it an agent or was it a, a buyer? Uh, it was an agent. Okay, so a whole week went by, no offers, still not under contract, no showings. Or you had a showing, but it was another agent, I guess, right? Yep. Okay, so um, is there, what's the most important thing that I could do for you this week? Uh, I don't really have anything, Bill. All right, call you next week. Let me know if I can help. Call him next Monday. Hey, Michael, same script. Home still on Main Street still available? Yep, it's still available. How many offers did you get this week? Right? Uh, none. How many showings did you get? I had three showings this week, and two of them were buyers, and one of them was an agent. Oh, okay. So did they give you any feedback? They didn't buy the home? Right? What was their primary concerns? Oh, I'm still chasing them down. You know, it's taken so much time to chase them down to get feedback. Mm, interesting. Okay. So um, what's the most important thing I can do to help you this week, Michael? Uh, nothing. Okay. Call you in a week. Next Monday. Michael, what's going on, sir? How's that home on Main Street? Still available? Yes. Bill, we've had zero offers and this week we had zero showings. Are you available on Wednesday to sign the paperwork? Ah, I'm excited to help you, Michael. I'll be right over. See what I'm saying? I love that, but in, in real world, like, does that really go like that? Because what I'm hearing, it, it sounds great coming from you, but it seems like you're kind of taunting them a little bit. I am taunting them a little bit. They want to sell their home. You're right. I'm not taunting. I'm not trying to be an ass. But I'm, I'm identifying the fact that they're not being successful. Right? I mean, they're trying to sell their home. What's the most important thing I could do? I, want to, I'm, I work with buyers and sellers in the area. I want to know all about all the properties. If you're not being successful, how can I help you? If I was taunting them, I wouldn't ask them if I could help them. Ah, oh, man. So one more question. What's the most important thing so I can do to help you? Yeah. <laughs> What I'm calling is, though, I think another thing is, is the places that I'm calling is just, random. Speak just a little louder, Ebony. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Hold on. I said the places that I'm calling, I, I, I'm not calling an area. So there's no rhyme or reason to the people who I call. So one may be in Stone Mountain, one may be in Kennesaw. So I just don't feel like me knowing that I don't know the Stone Mountain area. I don't know Shambly or wherever. So if you say that I have buyers and sell, I have buyers and I'm working in the area, I kind of feel like I'm starting it out wrong because that's not necessarily true because I don't work in those areas. I'm just literally trying to secure business. Yeah, if you don't have a buyer, difference. don't tell them you have, don't use that approach. But, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If it was a great opportunity, do you think you could find a buyer? Regardless of whether I know it or not, I'm going to try my hardest to do it. I, so, know, you, yes. I know that. But what I'm suggesting is if, let's say you went in, in that home in Stone Mountain and it was a $200,000 home and the seller didn't really know much, much better and they were trying to sell it for one sixty. You think you could find a buyer? Absolutely. Okay, so you, you've got potential buyers. You just need to understand what the property is. Okay, so I just agents. need I'm, got 1100 agents in, in Georgia Legacy Group. You post on the Georgia Legacy Group, hey, I got a uh, home in Stone Mountain that's available for 160 and it's probably worth 200. Does anyone have any investors that would like to learn more about this property? It doesn't have to be your buyer, it's I, I know of a buyer. If the home's a good enough deal, you should buy it. That makes sense. I didn't think about it on 
that scale. Like it does not have to be my buyer. Okay. I work with a lot of buyers and I've got a, you know, 300 agents in my office. We're looking to help homeowners. How can I help you? Right. And you could go in and say, Hey, I'm reaching out to you as, um, I see you're trying to sell your home yourself. I'm just a local agent. What's the most important thing I could do to help you today? I want to help you. And they say, well, they could, they'll tell you whether you should go down the buyer path or the seller path. Right? You follow what I'm saying? I do. Like my head's spinning. Like, so it's a good thing. I'm just... I'm opening it up to where I'm not being so close-minded. Like, I think I'm spending a lot of time thinking in my head, opposed to what's out there and what I already know. Yeah, just the, the, my advice to you on that would be, ask the questions to identify what problem you're trying to solve. Until you get more information from them, you, you don't know what problem you're trying to solve. And therefore, you're not gonna probably be all that good at solving it, right? Makes sense. So if you ask enough questions of them, hey, what, you know, moving is a lot of hard work. What's got that on your mind? Oh, I just wanted to see if I could get a little extra for my home. I don't really want to sell that much. Seeing if anyone will overpay for it. Okay, great. Well, I wish you all the best, sir. Have a great day. Right? They get the short script. But if somebody says, well, uh, um, you know, my grandkids live in Phoenix and I, you know, my, my daughter is, you know, sick and she needs some help, you know, help them take care of the kids. Wow. I see how important it is for you to get to Phoenix fast. How can I help you? You think anyone's asked them that? Probably not. No. Mm -mm. See what I'm saying? I do. All right, guys. Um, I'll see you at 12 o'clock. Okay. Thanks for your participation, Ebony. I hope this was helpful for you guys. See you soon. Hey, Bill. It was. Thanks. Yeah. Bill, wasn't there going to be uh, something at 10 o'clock today with somebody? Mm -hmm. No. Um, it's with Robin. Not through me, but I think there is something with, um, I think both Robin and Aubrey are doing sessions today. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, check the newsletter on that. I believe it's Robin that's doing the one at 10. And I think Aubrey's doing the one at 1030 maybe. Okay, cool. Right. Thank you. See you guys soon.